as Natalie alluded, Joel, where the hell have you been? <laughs> it's a great question. I, have, I, I was around for the referendum in October, um, but you're not wrong. Where have you been for the last six months, Joel? Um, I'm going to give you the Putin answer. I'm going to go back. Not thousands of years, but I'll, I'll go back, uh, let's say, eight years. Um, back when I was uh, 19, in 2016, believe it or not, um, I just left school and I was essentially in a situation where um, I was heavily involved in school. There was a big hole worth of time, so I got into politics. I started listening to politics online. And believe it or not, I was a Bernie Sanders bro. I was a Bernie bro. I was a democratic socialist. And uh, I know, I know. And I was devastated when Trump won. I really was. I haven't told people this stuff before, by the way. I was a subscribed member of the Young Turks, and if you know who they are and who Cenk Uygur is... Now, I was studying, I was, you know, I had a three-year degree I was working on in 2016, 2017, 2018. I was studying property economics, just like my dad, property developer. You know, I just wanted to get a white-collar job. While I was there, I was working with my hands, steel tying, labouring, bricklaying, a bit of everything on the site. And by the time I got to finishing my degree, I had my first brush with politics. By the time I got to 2018, I'd come around to the Jordan Petersons of the world, the more conservative ways of thinking, the Charlie Kirks from Turning Point USA. And um, I became more of a conservative sort of Christian with a libertarian streak. But at the end of 2018, I came across this fascinating thing with my university where they weren't letting me graduate. They said, um, if you want to complete your, um, if you want to get your results, if you want to get um, graduated, you have to complete the mandatory sexual consent training. Now, that's, I was just like, uh, is this to help, you know, people that are recovering rapists or something? It's, it's supposed to, be, to actually show you about consent in the, in the bedroom. And I was informed, no, this is for all students. And I was like, what is this? I'm not doing that. And um, to my surprise, I was one of the only students that didn't do it. And I said, I'm not moving, you move. Now, this is, a, this is the start of a theme, which I think you'll hear in the, in, the coming, um, in the coming years. I said, no, you move. They move. They said, all right, it's your last semester. You've finished your degree, we'll give you your degree. And I said to them, what if it was my second last? And they said, well, you wouldn't be able to proceed to the next one. We wouldn't give you the credits. And I was like, well, I'll be back for my master's. <laughs> now, that was UTS, by the way. Um, property economics, at the end of my property tax exam, had nothing to do with it. So I'm like, okay, no worries. I'm out of the construction industry, working with my hands. I'm now in the property development industry, back at the bottom of the, uh, of the food chain. Assistant development manager, working for Eastern Pacific, 2019. I saw a few things going on. Jeff, you might remember the Christian Democrat Party and what was going there with the, the, the party agent, the party president, former MPs. Complete disaster. No one was pointing it out. I was 19, sorry, I was 20 going on 21. I was like, is anyone going to point that out? There's 11 irregularities, illegal transfers, nepotism. You know, I'm a young guy here. I, I'm used to just stepping back and referring to the chain of command. No one stepped up. And I was like, all right. I'm going to prepare it with a good friend of mine, uh, Samra, Joshua Grual, good kid, younger than me, 19. And um, we got, saw a really good result from that. But it was at that moment I realised I personally don't want to be in a political party because they do become shackles. Other people should, but me personally, if I'm going to call this stuff out, I should remain outside of it. So I'm bubbling along, 2019 going into 2020. I've completed my one-year probation with this property company. I promise you, there's a reason for all. I'm going through all this. Mid-2020, we've all gone through the lockdown. We understand the first lockdown. Gigi Foster didn't. She was like, nah, this is wrong. You have to measure it in terms of the years. You are damn right. I went along with it. I was like, okay, makes sense. This is pretty bad. See what's going on in China, you know, Italy. Um, first lockdown. Then we slowly realised, oh, hang on a sec. It's a disaster. And I saw people like Gigi Foster talking about it, Mayor Jidnawaz saying 60 to 65,000 people will die in the UK due to the first lockdowns in mid-2020 because not getting cancer screenings. I start dabbling in making some videos, talking about politics, putting it on my private uh, uh, Facebook page. And a little, just a few views, just a few views. 
mid twenty by the I get by the time I get from mid twenty twenty, um, this time uh, four or five years ago, to mid twenty twenty one, I'd lost my job. I'd lost my father, unfortunately. I'd lost um, my, half of my siblings and their partners lost, lost eight jobs between them or something. We'd seen a decimation of the economy, the complete trampling of free speech, particularly along the East Coast and, the, and obviously in Perth with the state lockdown. And we saw a situation where I, had to, I was like, okay, well, that's it. You, you guys have really done it now. I started a show called uh, The Ark, ARC, because I didn't have the brand turning point yet. Um, but I wanted something that was uh, that I could actually pour my time into. So I started doing that, you know, got a few, it actually did quite well to, to my surprise. It actually got 20 to 30 million views over a, a, a six to 12 month period, just with iPhones, just like with what you see tonight. And mid 21 to 2022, I started to dabble a bit more working with Craig Kelly when he was an independent member of parliament. He was speaking up, I was like, that's the guy, that's the one I want to help with. I started helping with the, uh, uh, the freedom movement with regards to the Canberra protests in early 2022, if you remember. Started prepping us for the election. I did the how to vote cards. I got uh, things up and running with regards to informing people about elections and how it works. Also had done some local election stuff. Moving, in, and by that point I'd also done the uh, town hall speech where the government tried to throw me in prison for six months because I was just saying I lost my job, like, you know? So you can see this thing where no one was really talking at that time from the institutions we thought. Craig was speaking up, Gigi was speaking up, absolutely Jeff and others were speaking up. But where were the churches? The churches were very important in the history of Australia. The Anglican church was so powerful at a point. Once upon a time in the founding of Australia, the Anglican church kept out the Catholics. I mean, that's how powerful they used to be historically. Where were they? The only guy I saw was my good friend, Bishop Maramari, as Rami would know. Um, and he started to go viral in mid-2021 as a result. So 2022, moving into 2023. This time, one year ago, we'd fought, obviously, the federal election. We'd fought the Victorian election. Unfortunately, Dan Andrews had won. And we were all devastated from that, weren't we? Uh, in February last year, I remember speaking to this exact group that... Um, Natalie had run, and I said, guys, we've got a crisis on our hands. We've only got 15% uh, of seats covered. And then a month later, we applied ourselves, and people that are your friends, you, Jeff, put your hands up, and we ended up covering a massive percentage of the seats. Got John Ruddick elected, phenomenally. Now, he, now he's the thorn in their side for eight years. We also brought uh, Nigel Farage out to Australia, who's, as you know, he's... Uh, which, of course, some of us have seen, and he's now put his hand up to run. Um, and then, we have, obviously, we had the New South Wales election. So that was a year ago. And in the last year, we had Australia's Brexit moment. Yeah. We had Trump's 2016 moment. Yeah. We had the referendum result. Yeah. And that has been absolutely phenomenal for us. Absolutely phenomenal. Why is it? 2022 showed us that... About 15% of every state was on our side, 15 to 20%. They either voted minor right parties or they didn't vote. Many of them didn't vote. That showed us how many people didn't get jabbed. It shows us how many people were on our side. They like cash, they like these things. But the referendum result showed us how many there are to reach and evangelise to. So we saw 60% of people vote no, 40% voted yes. And we saw a situation where um, there were another 13% of people that didn't vote. A lot of them are our people. I can guarantee you most of those people would have voted no. So 60 to 70%, let's just say that, we can reach, we can evangelise to. 40, 40 to 45% of them aren't quite voting minor right parties just yet. But very encouraging. And so after the referendum result, I was like, this brings me to the answer of the question. Where have you been the last six months? Now, I realised after the referendum, we can't keep doing this. We can't keep doing these band-aid fixes where we're just trying to, trying to catch our tail. Like, it's just, it's not gonna happen. Um, and we need to lay down some serious grassroots. Let's be completely sober about this. Who let us down during COVID, during these times? 
It was Sky News. They were meant to be the voice. They deplatformed Alan Jones because of a segment that they had Craig Kelly on for because they got one a one week ban from YouTube and they are so reliant on YouTube ad revenue even to this day even to this day they are still reliant on Google's ad revenue why is this important because it could happen again one day they could just be like no nah, that obvious thing net zero that's racist if you say net zero is crap because you're affecting the third world some crap some crap like that so we can't exactly rely on Sky News. They've got some phenomenal people on there for now. But Alan Jones was great when he was there until they got rid of him. Same with when he was on 2GB until they got rid of him. The newspapers let us down. They didn't cover the news as much as we needed them to. There were some honourable mentions like Adam Crichton. But the vast majority of them, you know, and obviously Gigi Foster, but the vast majority of the papers were not doing what they needed to do. They were heavily censoring their comment section, not only on social media, thanks to big tech, but manually doing it on their own websites. That's why we have followings. That's I'm, you know, I'm just a construction pleb, you know, I just came from, you know, I've just outlaid my career path. What, why, was I able, why was I able to accrue a following of 350,000 and 200 aggregate million views over three or four years? It's because there was, an abdication of responsibility, as Jordan Peterson says in his book, 12 More Rules for Life. He gave me that advice in 2019. He said, where responsibility has been abdicated, opportunity lurks. And if you don't seize that opportunity, the totalitarians will. So that brings me to answering the question. Yes, we have not been doing things with solid long-term thinking. It's been band-aid fixes. And I don't blame you guys. For the last, you know, 30, 40 years, politics is generally, you know, John Howard days that he just sort of took care of things. You know, you don't have to worry about it. We had 30 years of uninterrupted economic growth until COVID. When we had, oh, we're like, hang on, they can lock us down? They can force jab me by withholding my pay? What country is this? And, and so I understand why people had that reality check. So after the referendum, I was like, all right, that's it. It's time to lay down some roots. It's time to start planning for the long term. These problems clearly aren't going away. You know, the referendum was great, but that was us saying no to their proposal. That was us putting a line in the sand and saying, you stop here. But when do we start going on the offense? When do we start, you know, getting control of our financial institutions again, our education systems, the government, you know? When are we gonna do that? And that's what this is about. So that led me to the question, Totally forgot I had a presentation here. Uh, <laughs> that, that, leads, that leads me to the, to the question, all right, well, what do we actually have to do? What do we actually need? What is the missing link? And uh, this is ultimately um, what, what, I, what I found it was. These are the objectives we're missing. First and foremost, there's 60 to 70% of people, you're on our side. You voted against the referendum. You're against Alba, you're against Coles, Woolies, Rio Tinto, you know, all the, the establishment in this country. But what are you lacking? There's a mechanism problem. What we're lacking right now is, first off, we need more numbers in the parliament, obviously. Genius, Joel, genius. We need more conservatives. We need more Christians, more libertarians of conviction that when they get elected, they don't forget, they don't stop picking up your phone calls once they get elected. You know, John Ruddick's a phenomenal guy, exactly what we've sort of gotten elected. People like Gerard Rennick, Senator Antic, Senator Roberts. We also need to better inform voters of what parties actually stand for and politicians stand for. Bringing transparency to the political process. And the third part is most important. How do we convert your values into results? What are the free tools that we can provide you guys and people like you across the country so that we can actually get results? That's what I've been trying to answer the last six months and I've been making inroads into. You can see the, um, just the, the timeline of elections as they're coming up. By the way, this is all being recorded, by the way, so tens of thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands are gonna to listen to this. But every project that I've come up with, there's 24 projects, which I'll be rolling out over the next 12 to 24 months, is specific, it's measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. I'm not here to waste your time, it's hard enough trying to keep your head above the parapet, you know, trying to keep your head above water, rather. Um, 
you know, people are struggling, you know, mother and father are trying to work just to keep food on the table. I'm respecting your time with these. And so I thought, what do we need? What do we actually need? Wouldn't it be nice if we had an alternative Sky News? It couldn't be deplatformed. We could always put it up. Wouldn't it be great if we had our own newspaper that could actually do what needed to be done during the pandemic reliably? Wouldn't it be nice if we actually knew exactly what seats to go after? Not only have I got answers to all those things, I've actually already done those things and we're about to launch them. And that's what this is about. The, these 24 projects, and this is just some of them, some of them I've had to hide. Maybe I'll show them the next time I, I give a public talk. But today I'm going to talk to you about just three particular projects that have actually been built and they're good to go. Again, this is being recorded just so you know. The first one is the video podcast, The Ark. New show I'm doing once every, every two weeks, 35 clips out of it, and reliable interviews that we can actually have conviction people come on and talk about things. The second one is the launch slash purchase of the light newspaper. Have you guys, has any of you guys seen this before? Very good. Well, I've got some good news for you guys. Um, the lovely David and Lisa, who are the retirees that ran it in WA, they've said, Joel, we can't keep doing this. Do you want to take it over? Uh, and so that, they asked me in December, and I, I accepted. I said, look, I've got, um, if I can get the personnel, if I can get the, the backing, I'll absolutely do it. So I'm the new owner of the Light newspaper. Um, we could just go to the next one, please. So we've got a, we've got a, sorry, the next one. So we've got a, um, so we've got, we've got the studio space. Okay. So that's been, that's been built in Sydney. That is something that's going to allow us to actually get conversations out there. This is totally brand new. That's what exactly what it looks like right now. Didn't come cheap. Did not come cheap. Oh, that's a that's a great question. Um, to be honest, there's been a lot of um, loans from phenomenal people who I won't say their names for their privacy, but um, it's it the the funding for it has. Did you say Clive? Absolutely not. I've never received a dollar from Clive. No, no. This has come from the punters. This has come from people that have helped me over the years. This has come from ad revenue from my own work. Um, this has not come, I, I've never accepted a dollar for compromising my values. I mean, I'm a young guy. Yeah, come on. I'm a young guy, I'm 27. There's a lot of things I could be doing right now, but I'm here because I recognize there is no retreat. Yeah. America is not a retreat. I mean, there's, that is a different story. I'm Middle Eastern, I've come from the Middle East. Our, the original countries we've all come from, whether it's Eastern Europe, South Africa, Zimbabwe, yes, Italians, sir. Greeks, Middle Easterners, Where's nowhere to go? This is, this is the final stand. And that's what I'm saying. That's what this is all about. I'm 27 and this is it. This is it. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of people say, Joel, you're crazy. You should go work in the corporate sector. You should go try and get into property development again. It's a great point. But I, the way I see it, HR would, would eat me for lunch. I've said enough things by this point, I'd be cancelled. So that's what this is about. I'm the full owner of this. There's no one that's you know, compromising this particular entity. So the light newspaper, why is this important? Well, it's actually a lot bigger than I realised. 250,000 prints they do every edition, and edition comes out every two months. My vision for this thing is recognising its strengths. It's not censorable, it's, it's physical. There's a network of distributors around the country. It is AI-proof in the event that some kind of crazy, <laughs> you know, thing from hell, Skynet takes over. It's physical, it's like, well, come and get me. Um, who knows, I might have to start doing it blue so lasers don't kill it. Uh, <laughs> but also, it's, it's already got 250,000 prints. My vision for it going forward is I want it to get to, a, to be a million prints a month in the next two years, and eventually in the next two years, a million prints a week. I'm not messing around here. This is like, they really let us down. They really let us down and they really annoyed me. Um, and the, the, no one's saying sorry for what happened. No one's saying sorry. And it's like, all right, well, we'll make you say sorry. And that comes through fundamentally politics being downstream from culture, us influencing votes, and us bringing about change to this country. Um, the next one is, uh, wouldn't it be great to earmark the seats to run in? Now, 
I don't know why no one's created this yet. A lot of these projects, it's like that. I said, wouldn't it be great if we had a map which showed the 2022 election results federally, and it also showed you which seats voted yes and which seats voted no. Now, this map showed exactly what I thought it would show. This is Western Sydney and Sydney. Now, what you'll notice is these purple places are the teal spots, just one, two, and three. This is the... This is the, this one, this one. So Wentworth with Allegra Sprenda. Now, the Liberal Party, totally feckless within the Liberal Party. They don't know if they're coming or going. Peter Dutton's meant to be the most right-wing leader there. But he's like, oh, look, maybe we'll reduce immigration by 25%. Needs to be back down into the... We need to be deporting people. Like, it's like literally... No, but literally... No, but seriously, like, it's just... Like, you know, we all... Look at me. I'm a Middle East now. It seems like a strange thing for me to say. When my parents came here, they understood you play by the rules, you pay your taxes, you vote, you participate. Yes. On Australia Day, yes. you go four-wheel driving on the beaches on the north coast. I mean, what, what's going on right now is a complete pissing on of our constitution, yep. of what we signed up to. The, the immigrants are often the most annoyed ones because they're like, hang on, what do you, what do you mean you're just doing handouts? 50% of the families in this country are taking out more taxes than they're putting in. This is ridiculous. Yeah. What does this map show? Within the Liberal Party, ever since the last federal election, there has been an internal debate. Do we try and take back the teal seats or do we look at the regions with more conservative values? These maps, and I'll show you the next one in a second, these maps disprove that. Let me tell you why. What is this? Each seat is color coded, all right. So the blues, the blues, it sounds, sounds like someone's winning. So the, blue, the blues are the liberal. This, this one, this one, this one, these are teals. The red is labor. And um, that's Dylee independent, but she's kind of irrelevant for this example. Now, there are a few features in this. It has the name of the seat, the name of the person that holds it. Let's go with Wentworth because I know how much you love Allegra Spender, <laughs> Natalie. Um, you got Wentworth, you got Allegra Spender, independent, actually teal. And it's, she won it by 4.1%. That means that when there's only two candidates remaining, she got 54.1% of the vote versus the, the Liberal person. Now, this is important, and this is what you will not find on any other map. This is, no one's made this, but I'm the crazy guy that went and made it. This shows you how much they voted yes and by how much. So if it has a little green dot with yes and the percentage, it says 12.5%. That means 62.5% voted yes versus those that didn't, that voted no. Now you will notice that the teals all come up as yes, 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 yes. Isn't that shocking? Not at all, not at all. We know those areas are left, but the Liberal Party insist on adopting policies to win those seats back like net zero, like all this crap they're talking about. But this clearly proves you shouldn't. Where should you be running? Everywhere it's red or independent and it says no, that's a seat we need to get because it's Labor, but the majority of people voted no. So you've got, look, all the way from Barton to Reed to Watson, Parramatta, Benelong, Blacksland. Look at Blacksland. It's 14.9% Labor, but they had 61% of them vote no. This is where the Liberal Party should be going. There are so many cultures out there, like the Indians. They're conservative. They're culturally conservative, but you're not pitching your platform to these people. If, and if that goes all the way, all the way along here. These are all no. Isn't that shocking? Uh, next one, please. This is Melbourne. This week, I don't know why. This week, I do not know why. But Josh Frydenberg, the guy that was meant to be the Liberal Party leader, it was a big tragedy, supposedly, when he lost his seat. He was the treasurer that was under Scott Morrison, essentially. He lost his seat to a teal, Monique Ryan. This is another teal seat. He was considering this week, do I run again? Should I run again and try and win this back? Now look, remember what I told you? Yes, 10%. So 60% of them voted yes. That's not a winnable seat, son. That's a really bad idea. You, like, look, this is Melbourne. This is complete, this is a terrible idea. These guys were lucky to keep their seats. And so if you go out further to the next one, 
you'll notice that this is Labor, 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 but they all voted no. That's where they should be targeting, but they're not. So after the referendum, I said 60 to 70% of this country opposed this proposal. Everyone that works for the Liberal Party as a consultant should be sacked. Reminder, in 2016, in 2016, I was laying bricks. I was tying steel. I didn't go to uni for this stuff. I didn't go to Canberra. I didn't learn statistics. I just didn't spend four years being locked down. I was out talking to you guys. So I, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're feeling. I know that grapes are 15 bucks, you know? So when we, so when we look at these maps, I'm not shocked. The Liberal Party have shown no sign of changing. And this is the problem we've got. This is the big problem we've got. The next election, Albo's been terrible, right? But my problem is, I don't think the Liberals are going to form government. We're, we're in for... Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. The Liberals will not form government at the next election. It's just not going to happen. Labor's probably going to be in minority government, but they'll still form some kind of crossbench with the Teals or some kind of independence... But that's going to drive them even more radically. Now, what does that mean for Australia? It's not all bad news. The minor party is going to continue to grow in the next um, uh, election or two. And that could be over the next four years. The UK is going through the exact same thing right now. The Conservative Party, the Liberal Party, they have not been doing a very good job at all. Nigel Farage, who is running, has said, I'm not here just for one election on the 4th of July this year. I'm back for five years because I recognise this election, this is about punching the, the Conservative Party in the guts, bringing them down because the Conservatives are going to be in opposition, but they won't be the opposition. But Nigel is going to, I guarantee you, he's going to win that seat. That seat that I've seen, it's, I've seen the results in Clacton, he's going to win that. And he is going to be the opposition uh, voice. And in the following election, I believe, I truly believe, that he's actually going to form government and there's a really solid chance he could be the Prime Minister. I really do believe that. I've spent a lot of time with him privately. That man, like, he, do, he, he doesn't write notes like this. He just gets up and talks. The guy is phenomenal. He knows things inside out. He's, he's really good. Um, so if we just go to the next slide, please. So in Australia, what is my job, essentially? Uh, my mum's so funny. She used to say to me growing up, you never know, John. Your job may not be created yet. It might be something that's not even a thing. And that's pretty much what's happened. My job, essentially, in layman's terms, is, you know, I'm showing you guys who's punching you, why are they punching you, and most importantly, how can you punch back politically? Settle down, settle down. But when it comes to these projects, these are the first three I'm announcing. They're built, they're costed, they're running. The ones that haven't been uh, circled in the, in the red um, box, they are, are getting going. This doesn't come cheap. This does not come cheap, guys. I, um, again, lost my job. I'm at a point now where I'm like, okay, I will provide the free tools, but I need some help. So if there's anyone that um, is eager to get a hold of me, please send me an email, um, or please reach out to uh, Natalie. I'd love to get in contact with you and perhaps go into more detail about some of these projects. It's my hope that the next time I come here, I don't know when, I can come back and be like, all right, we got six of these projects up, six more. And people are able to access these things, we're kicking ass, we're taking names, we're ready for the federal election, the state election, the local elections in September and October. Um, because at this stage, no one is doing this stuff. I don't have aspirations to run. In my view, that's not where the real change happens. It actually happens at the grassroots level and at actually mobilizing these politicians. They really are feckless. Politicians are like gloves. They will be filled by something. If not by their own values, it'll be by special interests. It'll be by their constituents. It'll be by whatever. My goal is to make you guys scare the crap out of your politicians politically so that you can see exactly how to lobby them in a way that preaches to your values so that it gets there. If we can get that, then that's great. I can enjoy, you know, the, some many years of my life. I'm 27. I've enjoyed many years of my life. In a, in a lovely country, that's my goal. I don't want to be elected. It's frankly stressful watching what people like Craig and the other centers have to put up with. I'd rather work in the rear guard, providing support here and there. Um, 
Also, with the Light newspaper, if you guys are able to uh, reach out to uh, Paul and Stephanie, who are actually here, could you please put your hands up? There's Paul and there's Stephanie. Um, we're looking for uh, distributors for the Light Australia. It's not a particularly heavy job. This is as simple as, you know, your local cafe, your local pub, RSL. You know, maybe you want to purchase, and they're very cheap, by the way, um, 100 copies or so, and be like, yep, we're going to leave it there as an evangelism tool. A lot of people criticise these kinds of meetings, I think, wrongly. They say, you know, Joel, you're preaching to the converted. Well, this is what Nigel Farage said recently when someone said that to him. Last night, actually. He said, you are not the converted. You are fishers of men, my yeah, friend. Come on. Go and spread the word. And that's what I say to you guys. There is a lot of people like you. There's a lot of people of the same values. 60 to 70% actually. And Australia is the lucky country in the sense that we're seeing what's going on around the world. And we can stop these things before it happens. You've got a lot of friends. You've got a lot of love. And as long as we've got phenomenal speakers like this up here to help guide us and to be courageous... I have no doubt we're going to push back this establishment. God bless you guys. Thank you.